Rather than blindly accepting a narrative that the mainstream media likes to spout, I like to watch and read news from all aspects, right, left, center, extreme, benign, all in an attempt to get a better understanding of the world. So imagine my surprise when I stumbled upon the dumbest article of all time from the New York Times. Now credit goes to my good friend from down under, Jesse Grant, for bringing this to my attention. Suffice it to say, the mainstream media is in full damage control after the disaster that was Madam Web. But did they learn their lesson? And exactly who are they blaming? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is Madam Web. Movie review channels on YouTube and other media have exploded in recent years. Hell, it's why I started my channel. Throughout my YouTube journey, I've met some pretty great people along the way, including Jesse Grant, Sin, and Matt and Bobby over at Hard Cut Reviews. We bonded over how cinema has devolved into an outlet for progressive ideology and lazy writing. Much larger channels, though, have been at the forefront of exposing all of this. Channels like The Critical Drinker, Film Threat, and Nerd Rotic have correctly called out this movement, and now they've begun to gain attention from the wider world. With articles such as the one from the New York Times and others, we've seen a backlash. People who generally can't think for themselves or at least refuse to engage in debate write off the opinions of people they either don't know or disagree with. This article is trying to put Madam Web in a positive light while simultaneously blaming YouTubers for its flop at the box office, calling them racist and bigoted. They never outright mention them by name, but they are clearly talking about YouTubers like The Critical Drinker, Nerd Rotic, Film Threat, and The Quartering. I've personally seen a huge rise in views and subscriptions in my videos which call out bad cinema like Madam Web, which makes me beg the question, is independent media winning the culture war in Hollywood? While Hollywood can make movies like Top Gun, Maverick, Dune, and Oppenheimer, they are making more flops than hits, and it is YouTube that's winning the hearts and minds of audiences everywhere. There has been a trend that South Park correctly pointed out of movie and TV studios pandering to a hyper minority that wasn't going to see their movies in the first place. As the critical drinker also correctly pointed out, studios have supplanted good writing and filmmaking in favor of signaling the virtue of the executives. Now, I'm not trying to bash movies and shows having a message. There's nothing wrong whatsoever with progressive messages and interesting ideas being put forward in cinema. When political messaging and ideology gets in the way of telling the actual story, it's the point at which it becomes the overriding factor that takes precedence over good storytelling, good character development, and good writing overall. This is what takes you out of the experience. Take that now infamous scene from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You've got to do better, Senator. Yeah, that was so cringe, and it completely took me as the viewer in the audience completely out of the experience. The magic that has been lost was the ability of films to completely take you away from reality and into a new world. A world you get to explore, interact with, and learn from. Take a movie like the original Avatar. It was essentially Dances with Wolves in space with Smurfs. The original Dances with Wolves, though, carries with it a strong progressive message of living with the land, not on it, becoming one with nature. It was the same thing with Avatar. Progressive message for sure, but it didn't get in the way of telling a story, even if that story was a direct carbon copy of another story. But can you tell me audiences weren't absolutely enthralled with the world of Pandora? What would have happened if the message was more front and center rather than focusing on the world building? There has been a real trend in Hollywood lately where movies seem to be lecturing their audience in a very arrogant way and letting their messaging become the only thing audiences see on the screen. It seems that movie producers very arrogantly put themselves above their audiences and they get upset when things don't go their way. When audiences deride bad movies that end up flopping, studio execs have begun to attack them. Since when has attacking your customer been a salient business strategy? Last time I checked, anytime anyone ever insulted me, I was less likely to listen or buy into anything they say. It's almost as if they're coming from some high and mighty place and are just so superior to everyone thinking they know better. Cinema is definitely a great place to raise specific questions or themes, but there's a way to do that without coming across as arrogant or narcissistic. 
there are indeed filmmakers that are able to do that well. Christopher Nolan, Steven Spielberg, Denis Villeneuve, among others, are able to do that very well. But it never comes across as arrogant. Now, I don't agree with the critical drinker and nerd erotic on everything. I mean, we'd certainly get into a fight over labor and workers' rights. But aside from that, I do think that YouTubers are superior at spotting trends and correctly calling them out. As content creators on YouTube, we don't put ourselves above our audience because we're not. I can tell you that I focused on building a community. I can see from the comment section that not all of you agree with my takes and that's okay. I mean, I've already unleashed the Kraken with my opinion of the trash that was zone of interest, but I'm here to start a dialogue, to engage in debate. Because without the art of debate, we devolve into savages in ideological camps hating each other. YouTube is a platform where you can start conversations and engage in debate. Making a video is not all one-way traffic. I see and get your feedback and I adjust accordingly. This is not a monologue or soliloquy. It's a dialogue that we have to continue to feed and continue to build off of. And we can't be afraid to be wrong. With my zone of interest video, I expressed an opinion that didn't sit well with Jonathan Glazer fans. I stand by my opinion of the movie not providing anything new or innovative or any coherent message, but I respect those of you who disagreed with it. Tell me why you disagreed with it, just like I need you to tell me what you liked about Madame Web and the Marvels. That's how we affect change in Hollywood. When you look at someone like the Critical Drinker, he will make points and ask questions within his videos that perhaps you never thought of before, but he won't insult or berate you. Or at least I've never seen him do that. He'll simply state his points, make his argument, provide evidence for his views, and if you agree with him or not, it really doesn't matter. It's just a conversation, a dialogue, a debate, and we as a society have lost the art of debate. It's people like the Critical Drinker and Nerd Roddick, people like myself and Jesse Grant, that think for ourselves, formulate our own opinions, provide arguments and evidence. And if we're wrong, we're wrong. And we can learn from it. We can learn from the debate. At the end of the day, art is supposed to be a conversation. It's not meant as a one-way communication. It evokes feelings and emotions. Are there toxic people out there? Are there bigoted idiots out there? Yes. But are they the majority? Absolutely not. The mainstream media, at the behest of the studios, insult their fans as racist, sexist, and bigots. But if there's so many racist, sexist, and bigots out there, then how do you explain the massive success of movies like Barbie, Crazy Rich Asians, Black Panther, and Oppenheimer? The reason those films succeeded and Madame Web and the Marvels didn't is because they resonated with more people. It also helped that the writing, direction, stories, and acting were far superior than anything Disney and Marvel have put out in the past five years. Making the argument that bigoted fans led to the demise of the Marvels and Madame Web is completely disproven simply by the list of films I just mentioned. Hollywood and society as a whole should take a page from Christopher Nolan. He is probably going to go down as one of the greatest directors of this generation, if not of all time. Have all his movies been massive successes? Of course not! One of my favorite Nolan films, Tenet, proves just as controversial. Some people, like me, greatly enjoyed the film. Others didn't. Christopher Nolan learned from that, and at no point did he attack his audience for it. All Hollywood and society as a whole needs to do is just have a little more humility. A little humility goes a long way. As a YouTuber, I'm humble enough to realize that I know I won't always get it right, but I keep an open mind and listen. In fact, one of my favorite historical quotes of all time came from Abraham Lincoln's address to the Men's Lyceum in 1858 before he became president. Quote, I know that I don't know everything, but I know where to find that which I don't know, end quote. I first heard this in AP US History in my junior year of high school, and it's stuck with me all these years. I seek out answers from every single source. I listen to all sides. For my political news coverage, I turn to places like the Young Turks, Secular Talk, Breaking Points, Ben Shapiro, and Matt Walsh. These run the gamut across the political spectrum from far left to the far right. I take away a little something from each one and formulate my own opinion. 
Studios attacking people like me, Jesse Grant, the critical drinker and nerd Roddick, really need to open their minds to opposing viewpoints. You might just be surprised at exactly how much in common you have with a person you disagree with if you just engage in a conversation. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think media outlets are right to attack YouTubers that express their opinions of Madam Web being complete trash? And where do you see the conversation going going forward? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.